Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, you can do us a favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing the bell. That'll let the algorithm know that you like this content and it will help us produce more. Merchants that are doing really well are the ones that you know, have a lot of different things set up, but the things that they set up are kind of based on the size of their store. Welcome to Honest E-Commerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honest E-Commerce. Today, I'm bringing to the show an e-commerce email expert in abandoned carts, SMS, all the good stuff. Dave, the founder of Recapture.io. Welcome to the show today, Dave. Thank you so much for having me back again, Chase. Uh, We had such a great conversation last time. I've been looking forward to this one for a while now. Yeah, we just had to press record because we were we we went off in the pre-show talking about nonsense already. So, um, just for the people that don't know what uh, who you are or what Recapture is just give them a quick kind of touch base on your your history in the industry and why they should listen to you, I guess. Sure, sure. So uh, like Jay said, I'm the founder of Recapture. We've been around since 2015 at this point. So we're a little OG. Um, we started on Magento. We spread to a bunch of different platforms. We're on Shopify, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, uh, some other smaller ones on there. And uh, you know, we've recovered almost 200 million for various merchants here of all different kinds of sizes. And you know, I, I never thought that I was going to be like this nerdy about email but here we are 6 years later and like email kind of jazzes me like I'm <laughs> I really actually like talking about it quite a bit unreasonably so actually yeah when you say now that you've helped recover almost 200 million that's with a bunch of zeros uh what does that mean so that means we've sent a variety of emails primarily abandoned carts because that's kind of where our bread and butter started and then as we've uh, gotten bigger we've added more different kinds so we support winbacks and post purchase of all flavors uh broadcast emails added last year that kind of stuff but what uh, what that means is that we've sent out emails and as a result of the merchants sending out emails, they're getting back on average about 10% of their gross revenue in a month, which, uh, you know, for all the stores that are on recapture, that's amounted to uh, almost 200 million. So we've processed, you know, pretty close to 2 billion in gross merchant volume at this point. All right. So I would say uh, the numbers support this statement. You know a thing or two about email. <laughs> well, I would hope so at this point. If I don't, then I've spent six years <laughs> wasting a lot of time sending email. No, no, no. You, you absolutely know things. Um, so uh, today you 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 wrote or, or brought some stuff to the table. So I'm super excited to dive in. Um, it, this kind of idea of the e-commerce email playbook that 90% of stores aren't running. So where do we start with this? Oh, gosh. Um Uh, Well, so if you are a merchant and you're listening to this podcast, I would say you're in one of two buckets. Uh, You're either in bucket number one, where you are like very self-aware, you're managing your own emails or you have, you know, an agency like Chase is here doing all your stuff and you're listening to the deep suggestions. You've got customer segments all over the place. You're sending regular broadcasts depending on the size of your thing, but you've got all the flows dialed in, everything sort of set up. Sadly, there's only about one or two in 10 of merchants that are like that. So the rest of you (laughs) probably fall into this bucket based on the thousands of merchants I've seen come through recapture at this point. And these merchants are either under sending email or they're just not sending anything at all, or they're not sending enough. Like any one of those things there, there's like a, a timidity, a hesitation to, you know, sending stuff out to your customers who care about your products. And, you know, uh, one thing I've kind of noticed over the last six years is that merchants that are doing really well are the ones that, you know, have a lot of different things set up, but the things that they set up are kind of based on the size of their store. Like you don't just lay it all out at once and have like, you know, you're not doing what Sheen does, right? You're not sending out campaigns three times a week, plus the abandoned cart, plus the post-purchase, plus this, plus that, plus that. Like that's too much. 
not everybody is sheen size, right? So you have to dial it in according to where you're at on things here. Oh, also I have this weird thing on here. My hands are like falling apart. <laughs> so if you see this random red thing on my hand here, it's uh, it's a bandage. Sorry. No worries on that. But yeah, so you you kind of hit the nail on the head. And it's funny you said like there's two buckets. You'll see people that have like the, everything set up and then there's just absolutely nothing. And it's the people in the absolutely nothing bucket. They are... There, it's not that there's they're lacking awareness and it's usually that they're like there's just more important things going on and I challenge that statement so much especially with the on the automation side of stuff it's like if you can't do it hire someone that can do it because it's the, the automation aspect of your email marketing will pay for itself over and over forever and ever it's the best investment you can make and there are just so many people that just haven't quote unquote, found the time to get it done. And it is mind boggling. Right. I mean, you probably quote these statistics to your clients all the time, but you know, you got 4 billion people that are using email. Most of them check it every single day and people buy much more from their email than social media, like 10 X more. And then of course there's the famous, you know, the ROI on email is like 42 X. So for every dollar you spend on your email marketing, you're going to get back 42. Uh, with recapture stores, I've actually seen numbers that are higher than that. Um, and I think, uh, I, I don't even actually know what the original source of that statistic is. It's so widely quoted and I see it go up or down a little bit depending on who's quoting it. But you know, one of my to do's is to actually pull the actual number from recapture because my gut tells me it's actually bigger than that. So like email marketing, you can't sleep on it. Yeah. I think these days they're also now that automations are such at the forefront and you can get so specific with them where the merchant is in their customer journey and the cool stuff you can do with that and the data that you can collect with kind of first party data and, and quizzes and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, they're, they're, they almost are two different buckets at this point. You've got kind of the automated stuff that's happening. You still have to have a strategy behind it and, and set those those flows or automations up, whatever you want to call them. And then there's like the campaign driven stuff, um, which I, you know, that's another funny thing that I that I often see is like there's, you know, these people that are into, they either have stuff or they don't. And sometimes people will just get the automation set up and then never send the flows. Or, or sorry, we'll never send a campaign after the fact. And it's <laughs> right. like, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Like after someone goes through your welcome series and they never hear from you again, how do you expect that to work? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting that you said that that email marketing is something that there is a lot of awareness. Like I, I would I would be hard pressed to find a merchant that had not heard that they should be doing email marketing. And when usually I'm talking to merchants, the thing that I've kind of discovered is that email marketing always sits in their top five. It's like, oh, here's my things I have to absolutely do. And email marketing is always in the top five. It rarely reaches number one. And it seems like there's always something something else to prioritize it there, whether it's customer support or logistics or shipping or order processing or product discovery or product testing or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. All of those things tend to push that merchant's awareness um, of the email thing down on the list and everything else to the top because those are the customers that are screaming at you. Email's not screaming at you, right? It's something that you either have it dialed in and it's doing its work, but it's never like hollering at you. So that's the thing I think uh, that is the struggle, right? Absolutely. So you got some questions here that I want to ask you, uh, you know, softballs, I would say, <laughs> and you're going to have to knock them out of the park. So the first one here is, you know, what, what do you think is the biggest fear that merchants have about email? It always seems like that the, when I'm talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, there's this fear of them bugging their customers or that oh they're gosh, going to yeah. annoy them or that they don't want to hear from them. I'm like, why did you open a store if you think you're selling to people that don't want your stuff? Like that doesn't even make any sense, right? Yeah. It's it, it's more it's more like if you think marketing is annoying, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> or you're doing it wrong, right? Yeah. Like you 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 can do marketing, you can be non-annoying, you can be persuasive, you can be fun. Like all of these things are possible in marketing, but either people don't know how to do them or they just have these weird misgivings where they're like, I don't want to send my customers email. You know, it's a fun... I, I push this back on people and I try to get them to do it right there in the moment. As I go, what's your favorite brand? Are you on their email list? And it, you know, but, well, which, what, what email list are you on? Right. I finally get to one where I know they're on that email list. And then I say, Stop, don't open your email yet. How many times do you think they email you a week? And I get them to guess. <laughs> and then I say, go look that up. Mm -hmm. And they're always wrong. They always get more emails than they think that 
sorry, they get less. They actually get more emails than they say they get. So right. they'll be like, oh, they probably send me an email like once every other week, and they're getting three a week or something like that. It's because you're not actually opening every email you're getting as a as a consumer. You are not registering every email that hits your inbox. And it's when you do have the time to interact with the brands that you have favor with, like then you'll actually look and and, and notice it. So it goes back to that. It's like you're not annoying your customers, right? They're mostly tuned out. Like you are. Your inbox gets like this tiny little span of attention. You're looking for the one thing in there that you want. You deal with it and then you're out. And all the stuff that isn't part of that immediate attention thing, you just kind of put it in the back of your brain or you just delete it and move on. Like, oh, I don't need to worry about this right now. Um, you know, I just had like a, a bunch of emails show up this morning, one from Sheen, one from Crate and Barrel. I'm on a bunch of different lists just so I can sort of kind of see what's going on just like you, right? Yeah, most most email marketers have a crazy filters in their inbox for inspiration. <laughs> yeah. And it's fun. I mean, I like to see, you know, it's interesting to see like big brands that are like, oh man, you guys really could work on this a lot. And then little brands that are like killing it. They're knocking it out of the park. Uh, I love to see those two extremes in there. Oh, you ask any like indie freelancer email marketer that has some cool case studies under their belt. Like, oh, like what is this... Fortune 500 big brand name doing wrong, and they're going to be like these 105 things. Like <laughs> it's it's so funny. Like don't drive your strategy Man. by what the top dogs are doing, or, or it, it's just some of them are on strategies that are a little bit dated. Especially, don't get me started on full picture emails. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Okay. We won't go that way. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you are an email marketer out there, or you're a merchant and you want to know what other things, what other stores are actually doing, go sign up for like two or three brands. You don't have to go crazy, but sign up and just see what emails you get. And I think you will be uh, astounded, like especially go for some bigger ones. Like Sheen is one of my favorite ones to sign up for yeah. because I'm just constantly getting barraged about like sale this and that. And apparently like another member of my family that is a distant relation signed up, but they use my email address for it. So I'm getting like twice the level of email. And it's interesting because they're getting all this cross sell upsell stuff that I'm not getting because I didn't buy, but then I get the regular promotion stuff. So I'm kind of seeing like two sides of it. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's good research. It's good to know what other people are doing out there. There's also a really cool service out there. Uh, it's like a curated collection of emails. It's called Really Good Emails. Oh, I email. love that. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you're if you're a merchant out there or you, someone that works for a merchant and you're like, look, you're like, I just don't know what to say with my campaigns. Go, you'll go get a, a bunch of inspiration from those emails. And it's, I had Chase Diamond on the show a few months back. Oh yeah, he knows his stuff too, and. I think is the number one thing that he like kind of left the show with. It was he was just like just send the email, like it doesn't need to be perfect. Yes, and it doesn't necessarily need to be like the most poignant thing. It's just like if you have enough figured out to where it's a unique message or something you haven't talked about in a, enough time, like just send the email because not sending a campaign means not making money from your list. Yeah, I would even go one step further to say. Even if you're feeling like queasy about the whole thing, just send it, get some data, like find out, is this campaign just crap? If it's crap, you can learn from it. You can do better, right? But you're not going to know that if you can't send the email, you have no data, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, let's jump into this. Uh, you've got this kind of this email ladder strategy. You want to kind of let the listeners know about that? Yeah, sure. So depending on the size of your store in terms of the gross merchant volume, so what is your gross sales every month? There are certain emails that you should be sending in order to be more successful. And it, it definitely changes as you move up the ladder. So I've kind of broken it down. I got some notes here. So I'll look at those. Um, I broke it down into like zero to 100,000. And these are annual numbers. So if you're making about 100,000 a year, this is kind of what you should add. 
have. And then from 100,000 to 500,000 and from half a million to a million and then a million above. And even above that, there's probably some, you know, strategies mm-hmm. and subtleties that you could probably talk to because I'll bet you've worked with more million plus brands than I have. But this is kind of like the sweet spot of stores that tend to be on recapture or the ones that hit these ranges. So I've seen a lot of this data. Um, so I like to kind of break it up into, you know, we start with a simple strategy and then you add to that strategy as you kind of move up the ladder. And so what does that mean? It means that you add more emails. So you're sending more stuff to your customers. So the absolute bare minimum, if you are like from zero to a hundred thousand, you absolutely need to have a welcome series. You've got to have abandoned checkout. And you should have some kind of a basic post-purchase sequence. And on top of that, you should be doing some kind of promotional campaign. I would recommend weekly, but it kind of depends on your store. Like if you're selling auto parts, a weekly thing might not be appropriate. But if you're selling like supplements or consumables or um, something like beauty, uh, you know, a weekly might totally be in that range. What would you say, Chase? I, you know what? I think that getting brands to send an email once a week, even around that million dollar a year range, is like pulling teeth sometimes. And it's because it comes back to fear. It's like we don't have, we don't know what to say. We don't have enough content to support this. And I'm like, between the number of made up holidays that are out there, whatever deal you're doing, the last piece of content you created, and whatever the heck your founder just did business wise that we can talk about, there's right there, I just made up eight emails I could send in one month. Right. right, but mm-hmm. it's the, there's this fear that it won't be good enough, and that is just unfounded. I think there's also a fear of I just don't know what to say, like you know, because you got these busy founders, right? So maybe they have somebody who's doing their email marketing full time, or maybe they're the ones doing the email marketing. I have a lot of stores that are handling it themselves, mm-hmm. and you know they're so busy, they're like. I don't have time to send a birthday email to, you know, to talk about the company's birthday. I, you know, that's just not even on my radar right now. I'm trying to fill orders over here. What are you talking about? Absolutely. So I feel like there's some of that and you have to kind of prioritize it. Clearly, you're not going to be if you're struggling to get your time to handle all the logistics of the business, sending a weekly email might be too much. But start with a monthly email, like once a month, just keep your brand in your customer's mind. Because if you are not in there when they're ready to buy, you're going to lose the sale, right? Absolutely. I mean, it it start with a cadence that you can keep up and, and, and do. But another, another thing is, is like most brands aren't sending as many emails as they should be sending with, because they fear that people are going to unsubscribe. Unsubscribes are actually a good thing. Those people weren't going to buy again anyway. Um, and I heard someone say like, if your unsubscribe rate from your like marketing, uh, broadcast or campaigns, whatever you want to call them is less than 1%, send more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love unsubscribes for that exact reason, because it tells me, all right, I just got somebody off the list that was never going to buy. So now let's hit everybody else that's left. Like my list just got better because of that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, the, the emails that I just talked about, so there was only four, if you're doing up to a hundred thousand a year, three of those are automated. Like you set them up and that's it. You don't have to think about them anymore. The week, you know, the monthly promotional one or the weekly promotional one, that's the only one that really changes. So in that, that low band, you literally have one email to think about on a regular basis. The rest of them are all set up and done. And you can just pull some uh, existing ones out of there from really good emails. Uh, Recapture, we set up some basic content for you that's kind of got best practices built in. Klaviyo does this, right? Uh, Everybody kind of has some default content. You can start with the default content. That is good enough to get started. You can always refine it later and you can always hire somebody else to tweak it and make it better and have your brand voice in there. But you don't need to get started with all that stuff. Like just keep it simple good enough is <laughs> the th- just ship it. <laughs> it you know that's the thing is like yes. people will sit around and, and there are some people in different kind of positions on this uh you know like it's got to be perfect before you launch because that's what's going to be the best for the brand this that and the other but it's like 99 percent of you aren't building a groundbreaking world shattering brand you're going to make a really awesome business to support your lifestyle and your family and you know hire some really cool people and build a cool business. 
um, the good enough works for for most of that. Um, while I like to say we do things really well at the agency, sometimes just shipping it, getting it done, iterating upon it after that, because uh, you can't get time back. And it's a multiplier of the investment and how fast mm-hmm. you're going to get that investment back. So if you're sitting around and, yeah. and you know every decision takes twice as long, it's going to take again twice as long to get that ROI back. Right, right. Uh, just you got to put something out there. If you don't have anything out there, you're never going to get a chance to improve it and make it better. It's as simple as that. And the funny thing is, is sometimes the mistakes are the ones that work the best. Uh, the mistakes can be fun. Like you can, like you said, they'll, they'll either work the best or, you know, you'll have something to talk about. You know, I've seen where brands make mistakes and all of a sudden they get a splash on social media because of that mistake. And then all of you, you've got all this additional buzz that comes around it. Like, you know, any, any um, promotion is good promotion there. Oh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So what would you say is your position on discounting in emails? Discounting on emails. This is such a double-edged sword. Um, it is It is very much a scalpel. You should use it just as carefully as you would use a scalpel. And I think that there are appropriate ways to discount. And then there are basically the ways that everybody else tries. So uh, the way that I think discounting kind of falls um, by the wayside for most people is that they throw it out there as the, oh my God, nobody's going to buy from me if I don't give a discount. I don't agree with that. Um, I think if you haven't really established the value of your product, if they don't know you very well, then maybe you need some discounting to kind of give them the incentive to start. But there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to discount. Like, let's say you're in a, uh, a luxury brand, for example, you're selling high end watches or designer handbags. Like, discounting puts a perception in your customer's mind that this is not something that is as valuable as you say it is, and I have to get a discount to buy it. So, like, you need to sell it with the value in mind. And so for certain certain products, certain audiences, you've really got to hit that value piece of it. Plus, I think that there are like at least a half a dozen better ways to deal with discounts than just offering a straight percent off because this is going to kill your margin, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're throwing out a 15% discount, that means your margins are getting cut by at least that much. So, you know, you have either got to some hella good math and a really good source for all of that stuff, or you're just, you know, making your profit smaller and smaller, which is going to make it harder for you to run your business. And when things like inflation hit, or we get another COVID thing and, you know, sales get wonky and you need some runway there. Like all of these things get screwed up by discounting, right? So here are like a handful of things that I like to use instead of just straight up discounts. So things like, you know, uh, a free shipping upgrade. So after they put in enough in their cart, they get an upgrade to free shipping on there. Um, You could do giveaways. So you could say, all right, um, you know, we want to give away like one thing, like my, but but pretty big. They could be like an Amazon gift card, or I've seen people do MacBook Airs, and then you get a bunch of people on your email list for that. So you could use that as a promotion. You can do a VIP program. Um, you could do bundling of products. So if you know that three things are always sold together, then put those things together and put a decent price on it so that people are more likely to buy. When I was doing um, digital downloads, our bundles were the best selling products that we had. It was it was obvious that there was so much more value in there because of the bundle. It just made it easier to sell. So that stuff does well. You know, buy one, gift one, buy one, get one. You can use those kind of things. Referral discounts. Uh, if you've got a strong social audience that you can promote to, that works pretty well. Um, th- things like that. Like there's there's better and more creative ways to discount than just throwing out a straight code. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, and especially with the email capture, everyone's like, you got to incentivize the email capture. And you are right. The, the default is a discount code. But when you can get more creative and find a way to still give that value without basically taking money out of your pocket with hurting your margin, uh, you're always going to be a more profitable store. So it's, it's just going to help you in the long run. Yep. Totally agree. Totally agree. Awesome. Dave, if... 
if someone was picking up what you were putting down today, where do they go? Where do they find you? What are you up to? Well, if you are interested in, you know, helping get that ladder strategy set up for your store, uh, you can come to recapture.io and we can hook you up. We're on all the major platforms. Uh, we've got a lot of default content that's out there. If you're ever like, gosh, I have no idea what I should be doing. Like you can actually contact me, the founder, and I'll help you get that strategy set up. So, you know, we're totally helpful in that regard. Um, I also tweet about email marketing and other random stuff like uh, gardening and home brewing on Twitter. So you can follow me at Dave Rodenbaugh. And uh, yeah, uh, feel free to just drop me an email as well. David at recapture.io. Awesome. Dave, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me, Chase. This was fun as usual. Look forward to coming back again sometime. All right. I can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own business. You can find all the links in the show notes. Make sure you head over to honestecommerce.co to check out all of the other amazing content that we have. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review. And obviously, if you're thinking about growing your business, check out our agency at electriceye.io. Until next time.